I've said this once and I'll say it again. No matter what you're building, the most important first step is planning. And that's especially true if you're building with AI. The more time you spend planning and figuring things out before you write a line of code, the less headache you're going to have in the future. This is a core principle in product management. It doesn't matter what language, it doesn't matter what framework. And if you spend time building anything, I'm sure you've already learned this the hard way. So in this video, we're going to look at GitHub's new spec kit, which is an open source tool you could use right now with GitHub Copilot Agent, Claude Code, and Gemini CLI, and I'm sure it will become available in more tools like Codex soon. GitHub's spec kit focuses on spec-driven development, STD, and I've talked about this in a lot of different videos. I've made a video about creating a PRD. I've talked about Claude Taskmaster. I've talked about building sub-agents in Claude Code that does this, and I've talked about Amazon's Kiro.dev, which was the first official tool that added spec-driven development into its workflow. But then it got really expensive, and the truth of the matter is we could do it anywhere, especially with spec kit. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use spec kit, some tips and tricks, what I think you should know, and what I like about this over Kiro.dev is it's much more thorough. It does research. You can use your already installed MCB servers. It takes a bit longer, but in my experience, it comes out with a much better plan. Now, because it takes a bit of time, I'm just going to show you how to get started. And then I'm going to show you a project I'm already working on. So this is the spec kit GitHub page. To get started, you just copy this command and you open up terminal. And don't worry, it's really easy to use. So you paste it in and then you want to give it a project name. So let's just call it vision based calorie counter. So I'm going to press enter. Now we see the specify logo, and you can choose off the bat which AI system you're going to use GitHub Copilot, Cloud Code, or Gemini CLI. Right now, I'm going to use Cloud Code. Essentially, what it does is creates slash commands and scripts, and you go through them sequentially until you build out all your specs. So now they want us to open up that folder and start using our slash commands. So we open up VS Code in the directory that we just created, the vision based calorie counter. And as you see here in this new project that it created, it created a memory folder with a constitution.md. Then it has its scripts, and it has its templates, and then it has its slash commands. We don't need the agent right now because we're using Claude code, so we're just gonna close this, but I'm gonna add some MCB servers before I get started. The fastest way that I found to add MCB servers to new Claude code projects is just type in Claude MCP add from Claude desktop. I'm gonna just deselect the ones I don't want. In this case, I want context seven and bright data. I'm gonna just turn off everything else. Now we start up Claude, and then if we type slash MCP, we see those two MCB servers, Bright Data and Context 7. And I specifically want those so that in the research phase, it can use those tools. Let's look back at the terminal and do the first step. Let's do slash specify. And we want to give it some context of what we want to build. Now, I think it's really important to give it as much context as possible. We want to talk about what we're trying to build, what our goal is, what the end user's goal is. We could give user stories. We could give use cases. So I'm just going to dictate right now. I want to create a web app where I can take pictures of food give a bit of description and add it to a calorie journal so I know how many calories I'm eating. And the use case is sometimes I eat out at restaurants and I don't know what the full calorie count is. So this should use the internet and AI to calculate how many calories are in every meal and then create a log for how much I'm eating. So I just dictated what I wanna build and now Claude Code will start working on it. And this is just for demo purposes. I suggest iterating on a prompt and even building a PRD before getting started. The first thing it wants to do is make this script executable. So we're gonna say yes. So what it's done is create a new branch, create a spec file. If we wanna look at it, we go in there and take a look. Guidelines, user stories, functional requirements, acceptance scenarios. You see here that there's certain sections that say need clarification. So there's two things you could do here. You can either clarify it here within this file what I prefer to do is go to Claude Code and dictate my clarifications. So in this case, I just say clarifying the auth method will use email and password, clarifying the data retention period, et cetera, et cetera. I give it back to Claude or whatever agent I'm using. I let it fill in those clarifications. And only when I'm ready, I go to the next step. So if we look back here, the next step is slash plan. And you can be very specific with it. In my case, I just want to give it autonomy and see what it does. So I'm just specifying this should be a web app that I can run on my phone and it will use Superbase. So I'm going to press enter. It's gonna to ask to make it executable. We're gonna say yes. And now it's gonna go out and plan. It's gonna use the internet or MCB servers we added, Bright Data and Context 7. And we can see the changes it's making. So it's going from the template, extracting from the feature spec, and it's creating a summary here. Okay, so it went ahead, created the plan, it did a research, created the data model, and then it also created a Claude.md file now that it knows what we're building. And so now we can look at all these files here. We can look at the plan, look at the quick start guide. It tells us how we want to set up our super base project. And if we want, we could also look at its research. We can see what it was researching and the rationale for the decision it made, as well as alternatives considered. So it's really cool. It's very thorough. So now if we go back to Cloud Code, we just type in slash tasks. And what that will do is take everything it did till now, all the research, the plan, the specs, and break it down 
into small tasks that you can achieve sequentially. So I'm gonna press enter. Okay, for the sake of time, I just wanna show you a different project I was working on earlier. And that was creating an MCP server for Homebridge. What I wanna show you here is that once it finishes, it breaks it down into executable tasks. In this other project, it broke it out into 48 tasks organized into TDD phases. So it's not just STD, it's TDD. It should actually be called STDD, not a good joke. TDD is test-driven development. So we started here with spec-driven development, but test-driven development is when you build out tests before you even write a line of code. So when you write your code or start building things out, you already know what you're testing. And then it becomes very clear if what you built will work. And if it doesn't pass the test, you don't move on to the next thing. That's TDD in a nutshell. So if we look at task four through 14, are writing all those tests out. Only after the tests are written does it start implementing each feature. Okay, so now we did all the spec-driven development with test-driven development built in. We did all the planning. We're ready to get going. How do we start? In Kiro.dev, there's a button where you can just press start above every task and it'll start working on it. Here, it's a bit different, but actually I think it's a good thing because you could take this task list and work on it with any agent. So you could work on it with Cloud Code or Codex CLI or Cursor Agent, because all you have to do is start a new chat with whatever agent and say, hey, work on task 005, for example, or work on task 006. Now you can tell it to work on task six through 10, but I think it's best in most cases to work on one task at a time, because you wanna make sure that it works, you wanna make sure that the tests run well, and if you run multiple tasks at a time, it's gonna be a lot harder to debug and figure out what didn't work. And the more obvious reason is context management or context engineering. You don't wanna fill up the context window. As we know, as the context window gets smaller, the less efficient the agent becomes. So that's another reason why you should start a new chat or clear every conversation before starting a new task. Now, one thing I was actually curious about was how much context does this whole planning process take? So what I did was when I ran this project, I didn't connect any MCB servers. I just wanted to see the raw performance. So I ran slash context, which is a slash command in cloud code. And we saw here that it used half of the context window for the whole planning process. And it only had two MCB tools, which are the built-in cloud code MCB tools, okay, diagnostics and execute code. And the reason I'm pointing that out is MCP tools take context. You don't want to add every single MCP server to Cloud Code, Gemini CLI, or Codex CLI, especially because you can't toggle them on and off at runtime. So you only want to add the MCP tools you need. That's why with the project we started with, I only added Bright Data and Context 7. So some final things I want to tell you about Spec Kit. Once it's done creating the specs and the tasks, you could run it in any agent. What I've been doing over the last few days is running it in Codex CLI with GPT-5 High, and I've had really good results. As I'm sure you know, Cloud Code has been very wonky over the last two weeks, but GPT-5 High has been really great. When it comes to Spec Kit itself, one improvement that I'm looking forward to is not having to go through the documents it created and look for the needs clarification. I would prefer that the agent I'm working with ask me those clarifying questions. And that's something that I build into my own props where I have the agent actually ask me those clarifying questions. So it doesn't leave room for errors or mistakes or misinterpretations. I do think that another feature they should add is add those tasks to GitHub issues. And then you'd be able to either mirror that to linear or run GitHub work trees on it and have a lot of these things run in parallel or even away from your computer. And that would be a really cool feature. And lastly, I'd prefer if it was able to break the tasks into even more granular tasks make each task even smaller, and that would remove a lot more margin for error. But overall, I think this is a great start. I love that it's open source, that it's so thorough, that it does research, and then it also builds out tests. And I think this is the way forward. It will save you so much time in the long run if you do all the planning ahead of time. And this toolkit will get you 75% of the way there, if not more. So I hope you found this video insightful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.